As an advanced society, we've created a lot of very heavy problems that need solutions. 200 years ago, if you'd asked someone how to move several thousand pounds of earth in an afternoon, they'd think you were insane. These days though, there are entire industries built around doing just that, and the engines driving them are just as huge, literally. From the vehicles that carry spaceships to the world's largest water wheels, these are some of the most powerful heavy machines in the world. Strato Launch Party Okay, I know what you're thinking. And no, this isn't a picture of a plane I've mirrored at the wing in Photoshop. It's a real aircraft called the Strato Launch, and its job is out of this world. Don't feel silly if you think this monster looks like two smaller planes duct taped together. Because it is. Okay, maybe not duct taped, but the machine is largely made up of two decommissioned Boeing 747s. As you can probably guess, this makes its wingspan nearly double that of a Boeing 747s, coming in at a whopping 385 feet. That's longer than a standard football field, and more than enough to put smaller passenger crafts to shame. What's more, in order to safely take off and land, this behemoth is outfitted with 28 wheels, weighing in at an insane 580 tons, five times the weight of a blue whale. It's amazing to think this thing can fly at all. In order to carry all that weight, the Strata Launch is equipped with six powerful jet engines along its wings, while most commercial planes typically have two or four. The Strata Launch only requires one pilot and co-pilot who sit in the right fuselage. So what's the purpose of this super plane? Well, you can think of the Strata Launch as a cabbie, but instead of confused tourists who somehow can't find the Eiffel Tower, it's transporting shuttles into outer space. The Strata Launch is designed to carry a space shuttle on its underside to an altitude of around 243,500 feet. At this point, the shuttle can take off from the Strata Launch itself. Though it's still just being tested, this launch method has a few benefits over the traditional blast off from the ground tactic. Firstly, the Strata Launch is able to take off in worse weather than space shuttles. Additionally, hitching a ride on the plane also means the shuttles have to carry less volatile fuel themselves. At its top end, the Strata Launch is able to carry a mind boggling 550,000 pounds. That's enough to carry an entire double decker bus. Actually, it's enough to carry 20. Typical, you wait for a bus in outer space for 10 minutes, and then 20 come along all at once. Big birth of boars. What's the most boring thing you can think of? Being stuck in traffic? Watching TV adverts? A Star Wars prequels triple bill? Well, whatever your answer is, it probably doesn't bore as much as our next entry. Meet Big Bertha, the world's biggest boring machine. Boring machines are like giant spiky drills that spin through the earth creating tunnels as they go. Bertha's job was to create the Route 99 State Tunnel in Seattle, which spans two miles and connects Soto to South Lake Union. As you can imagine, moving that much dirt takes muscle. And when it comes to size and weight, it's hard to get more impressive than Bertha. Measuring in at 326 feet long and 57 feet in diameter, Bertha is as long as Big Ben and two buses wide. What's more, Bertha weighed in at an inconceivable 6,700 tons, nearly 10 times as heavy as the Christ the Redeemer statue in Brazil. It also makes Bertha more than twice as big as other tunnel boring machines like the wonderfully named Emerald Mole. Of course, all this Bertha didn't come cheap. It's estimated the old girl cost around $80 million to construct. The machine was so large and complex, the pieces were constructed in a specialist factory in Japan before being shipped in 41 parts to Seattle. As maneuverability wasn't exactly her forte, Bertha was constructed facing the direction she had to bore. She got to work in 2013, but despite her size, it still took her four long years to complete. This is because the giant cutter head bolted onto Bertha's front rotated at roughly one revolution per minute grinding the earth in front down before transporting it on a conveyor system through the rest of the rig and out of the way. As it gradually ground forward, huge cement ring segments lined the tunnel Bertha left behind and a series of hydraulic cisterns then pushed off the new ring section to propel the whole operation forward. The reason it was done so slowly was to prevent sudden movements from sending shockwaves through Seattle above. So slow and steady really was the name of the boring game here. 
By 2017, some 9,270 feet and one and a half million tons of dirt later, Bertha broke through. It's estimated the Route 99 tunnel can accommodate 110,000 vehicles a day, and they each owe Bertha for the privilege. You'll notice I'm referring to Bertha in the past tense. This is because tragically, Bertha was disassembled and melted down after completing the 99 tunnel. Her metal was reused for other machines, so in a way, she still lives on. You know what isn't boring though? My videos. So go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons to keep up with more mind-blowing facts and entertainment. All done? Great, let's hit the gas. A big wind's blowing. Ever wish watering your yard took a little less time? Well, allow me to introduce the big wind, which could water your lawn in seconds and probably destroy your driveway in the process. This incredible sprinkler tank is used to fight fires that would otherwise be impossible to put out. These include fires caused by extremely flammable chemical spills that without the big wind would have burned so hot the only option would be to leave them until they went out on their own. The big wind wasn't actually designed to fight fires though. It was built to clean out tanks, specifically Soviet era tanks that had been contaminated by chemical weapons attacks, whose trace components can remain dangerous for years. This gun can be stubborn though, so plenty of muscle was required to get the job done. The Big One's chassis is comprised of an old T-34 tank, the immense weight of which provides plenty of stability for what's on top. Two jet turbines, originally stationed on the classic MiG-21 fighter jet, these massive engines can be swiveled in position, just like the turrets they replaced, and offer an impressive amount of precision considering how powerful the water blast is. Honestly, this thing looks like some kind of future tank to me. Those things look like they could level buildings. And well, they almost can. You see, after testing the big wind out, and even after limiting the engine's power to just 70% of the maximum capability, the machine was still too powerful for the purpose it was designed for. Currently, the Big Wind is able to blast 220 gallons of water per second. You heard that right, per second. So in just one minute, this thing can blast out more than a thousand beer kegs worth of water. Not only that, but as its name implies, the Big Wind also expels a huge amount of air when operating, which is perfect for clearing out smoke as well as flames. If you ask me, the Big Wind is wasted fighting fires. I mean, could you imagine this thing powering a water slide? You'd end up in another country. A very hungry caterpillar. Have you ever needed to take a monster dump or plop down a massive load? Well, Caterpillar are the manufacturer for you then. They build some of the best dump trucks in the world after all. While their 797 line have been around since 1998, their 2009 F model was their greatest achievement yet. This behemoth of an earth mover is a whopping 49 feet tall and 47 feet wide, which makes it one enormous cube of a vehicle. The purpose of this dino dumper is the loading, transportation, and dumping of earth, rocks, and minerals. And as you can imagine, the 797F is particularly useful on construction sites, which tend to feature dirt and minerals, in spades. The 797F has a payload capacity of 400 short tons or 800,000 pounds, which is enough to be able to give 60 elephants a lift, though it would be a cramped ride. This capacity is a full 20 tons higher than the previous 797B model, which was a massive mover in its own right. What's more, the 797F itself weighs 1,375,000 pounds. This means the total weight of the truck with a full payload is nearly 2,175,000 pounds. In order to move this incredible weight, the Caterpillar requires an incredible engine. The 797F is fitted with an absolutely monstrous 4,000 horsepower engine. This means that even with a full payload, the 797F is still able to reach speeds of up to 42 miles per hour. While that may not sound that fast, keep in mind that the combined weight is equal to six and a half houses. It's a Herculean task to move it all, let alone within your local speed limit. Because the 797F is so large and heavy, it can't be assembled in a single factory. Instead, different vehicle components are built in one of six different factories across North America. These enormous parts are then transported to the client, which can require 12 or 13 semi-trailers to deliver. Man, imagine being that semi right now. I'd certainly feel like I wasn't measuring up. Cobalco the Destroyer 
Imagine someone challenged you to a duel. What weapon would you pick? A shotgun's a safe bet. Maybe a rapier if you're feeling fancy? Well, now imagine it wasn't a person that challenged you to a duel, but a building. <laughs> yeah, suddenly those puny weapons aren't looking so useful. This is where you'd call in the Kobolco SK-3500D. Now, you may know Kobolco construction machines from this cool, but unfortunately photoshopped picture of one of their 210 excavators that went viral recently. Sorry to be a party pooper, but it'd take more than a single set of continuous tracks to scale that incline. Luckily, the SK-3500D is cool and real. This mammoth machine is designed to rip apart the foundations of skyscrapers due to be demolished. You know you're dealing with a seriously hardcore piece of machinery when its preferred prey is a skyscraper. Tearing apart buildings requires a lot of force, and the 3500D can be equipped with a number of claws, or nibblers, with a top cutting force of up to 2,716 kilonewtons, which is like being squeezed with more than 610,500 pounds of force. Not even my mom squeezes me that tight on Thanksgiving. What's more, the Kobolco SK-3500D entered the Guinness Book of World Records in 2005 as the machine with the tallest working height at a stomach churning 213 feet. That's tall enough that it could grab onto the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Heck, it's strong enough it could probably finally straighten the thing out. As you can imagine, this giant destroyer is heavy, weighing in at around 327 tons. Unsurprisingly then, it isn't the speediest piece of tech with a top speed of just 0.7 miles per hour. It doesn't need to be that fast though. The 3500D is designed with a number of detachable hydraulic pins in critical areas. This means that as gargantuan as the machine is, it can be handily taken apart when it's done working and put back together in the location of its next job. If a 213 foot tall, 330 ton piece of heavy machinery can fit through tight spaces, there's really no excuse I can't fit into my pants from last year. Wheel of the People Feast your eyes on the amazing spinning Falkirk wheel. To me, this thing looks a little bit like Doctor Doom is going to use it to power some sort of death ray, but that's just because a lifetime of comic books has destroyed my brain. Despite the fact it won't fire a laser once it spins fast enough, it is still a remarkable piece of engineering. The Falkirk wheel resides inside Scotland's Union Canal, which was originally built to connect the country's two largest cities, Glasgow and Edinburgh. The Union Canal rests at the top of a hill, while the Forth and Clyde is along the bottom. Before the construction of the Falkirk wheel, getting from one canal to the other was a nightmare. Boats had to rely on an extended series of locks, which are devices that move boats by raising or lowering the water levels inside different chambers. This was a long, arduous process, and the locks frequently broke down and required maintenance. In 1998, Scotland launched the 84 million pound Millennium Link project, at the center of which was the striking Falkirk wheel, the world's largest rotating boat lift. The way it works is that a boat enters on one end of the lift while the other end is filled with water. All the wheel then needs to do is provide enough force to begin spinning the lift like one big push, and inertia does the rest, delivering the boat to the other canal. This unique design uses a shockingly small amount of energy. This is because most boat lifts use motors carrying heavy boats their entire journey. In order for a conventional boat lift to raise 500 tons of water 79 feet in the air, they would need to expend 32 kilowatt hours of energy. That's an entire day's worth of power used by an American household spent on a two-minute journey. By contrast, the incredible Falkirk wheel uses just one and a half kilowatt hours of energy, less than a twentieth of a conventional boat lift. I think I have a lot in common with the Falkirk wheel. If something prods my stomach with enough force, it jiggles for hours. The Stigersaurus. Psst, how dirty are you? Real dirty? Okay, well, let's get down and dirty then, with some good old-fashioned farming facts. If you're in the need to get down and dirty, look no further than the Case IH's STX Steiger line. These tractors are primarily used on American farms for plowing and turning up soil so seeds can be planted. Case IH manufacture a wide range of STX tractors, from the 405 series to the 682. These numbers refer to the horsepower of the vehicle, and considering how chunky these machines can get, those are some impressive numbers. The wheels of these beasts on their own are some 82 inches across and weigh in at 740 pounds each. 
In fact, they're even more impressive when you consider the larger models can be outfitted with tracks rather than wheels. These help with stability, but also turn these machines into speedy farm tanks. How come these never made it into Plants vs. Zombies? These powerful engines mean the tractors are able to drag and pull some serious weight, like this massive 18 wheel stick rake, which is used for mowing and clearing debris. Case IH put their powerful tractors to the test in 2005 when the STX 500 set a world record by plowing 321 hectares in just 24 hours. That was 70 hectares more than the previous world record, and 112 more than the previous STX record. Currently, the most powerful commercially available tractor in this line is the Cast STX Steiger 620, and let me tell you, it can get her done. This big butte can weigh up to 60,145 pounds, but can handily carry more than its own weight with a maximum capacity of 64,000 pounds. Of course, a beefy boy like this doesn't come cheap. The 620 regularly sells for over 600 grand. Guess this Steiger ain't so meager. The Amazing Spider Legs I used to think taking a relaxing stroll in the woods was a pastime only enjoyed by people but it seems robots appreciate a good stroll through nature too. No, this isn't a robotic spider from an upcoming Marvel movie. It's Timberjack's Walking Harvester, though it does still seem like something out of a comic book. Timberjack has been working on walking technology as far back as the 1980s, starting with a simple walking platform. Since then, advancements and innovations in the technology have allowed for the creation of their incredible walking harvester. The fancy piece of tech is controlled entirely through a single joystick, and the pilot is kept stable and steady in a gyroscopically sound cockpit. Remarkably, sensors in the walker's feet are able to scan the soil beneath them and adjust the gait and pressure of the machine's steps accordingly. The length of each step can be between 12 and 35 inches, and though the walker weighs a hefty 28,860 pounds, which is more than a standard school bus, its six legs evenly disperse that weight. Although, could you imagine an actual school bus with legs instead of wheels? Going to school would have been so much cooler. So, besides being generally futuristic, what benefits do legs offer over wheels? Well, for starters, they make navigating hilly or bumpy terrain easier. A machine with wheels might have to waste time driving around a log, while a sextra pedal machine can simply step over it. Legs also allow machines to rotate on the spot, walk in any direction without turning, and remain more stable in difficult terrain. Wheeled machines also tend to have a greater impact on their surroundings. Tires disturb more soil than legs and can more easily knock over trees. If a tired machine is heavy enough, the grooves it leaves behind in the earth tend to pool and funnel rainwater, which can lead to soil erosion over time. Despite all these benefits and the original harvester being prototyped over 10 years ago, walkers still have a long way to go before they replace wheels entirely. John Deere, who purchased Timberjack in 2000, are confident that with more refinement, we can expect to see more walking machines in the future. In fact, they already have walking tractors, loggers, and canal dredgers in the works. Maybe we aren't so far off from having school buses with legs after all. Straddling the line. Two heads may be better than one, but this next machine raises the bar by asking, are three wheels better than two? This weird little alien is Combolift's straddle carrier, and its main purpose is transporting heavy containers around dockyards and ships. The machine features three wheels on a chassis that really makes it look like the thing has legs. Powerful grips at the top of the chassis are able to grab onto containers like the machine is straddling them before it whizzes away. While this peculiar little vehicle may not look that tough, you shouldn't be fooled. The SC3 straddle carrier is powerful enough to lift a total weight of 35 tons. That's strong enough to carry 15 rhinos, which is a heck of a mental image, and is even more impressive when you consider the carrier itself is only 17 tons. The support beams of the SC3 are adjustable and can extend to more than twice their compacted size. This means it can carry a container as short as 20 feet or as long as 45 and can extend as high as 32 feet. Imagine those 15 rhinos dangling 30 feet above you. The extent of this reach could potentially be even greater as Combolif reportedly custom-built 98% of their machines to better suit the needs of their clients. This includes creating machines that can be operated entirely via remote control. As you can see, large cranes and reach stackers are much bulkier and harder to maneuver than the straddle carrier, which can move about cramped dockyards and operate in incredibly narrow areas with ease. They can also pull off some pretty impressive donuts, as you can see here. 
Additionally, the comparatively lightweight straddle carrier is more fuel efficient than heavier cranes. Man, I can't stop thinking about the benefits of straddle carriers. Be right back. Just filing a patent for a hammock car. It's no problem. If I asked you to move the Eiffel Tower in an hour and fling it several hundred feet away, you'd probably call me crazy. And you know what? I can't blame you. It sounds impossible and also like a very weird thing to ask a stranger through a YouTube video to do. However, if that Eiffel Tower were made of snow, well, it might not be as impossible as it sounds. This is the Overawesome TV2200, and it's the most powerful self-propelled snowblower in the world. Its specialty is removing snow from airport runways, and machines designed to do that are always fun to watch. Just watch this little snow wolf go. Snowblowers work in two stages. First, a rotating auger at the front of the machine scoops up the snow, which is then fed into an impeller. This is akin to a powerful fan, and the TV2200 is super powerful, with it able to yeet the snow more than 110 feet away. So why is such a powerful machine needed for this job? Well, as you can imagine, a lot of snow tends to pile up on airport runways. They're big, flat strips of land with nothing to shield them from the elements. As such, the Overawesome requires a pretty beefy engine, 2200 horsepower to be exact. It utilizes this power amazingly well and is able to clear up to 12,000 tons of snow an hour. In pure weight, that's like spraying over an Eiffel Tower's worth of snow an hour. Now, consider the fact that all this snow can be shot over 110 feet away and the Overawesome seems less like a piece of airport equipment and more like some kind of long distance snow-based assault weapon. This thing could add a heck of a lot of magic to a Winter Wonderland themed birthday party. Just make sure it doesn't bury the kids alive. Well, there they were, some of the toughest, coolest, and most highly specialized machines around. And I didn't even mention the BMA's server farms that house all my videos. Speaking of, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and let me know which of these machines was your favorite in the comments down below. Until next time, thanks for watching.